mystery of God in you. Within every person is the unborn possibility of limitless growth, and ours is the privilege of giving birth to it. Paul obviously had this in mind when he referred to the mystery hidden for ages and generations, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians, Colossians chapter 1, verses 26 to 27. <coughs> It is only through realizing this mystery of God in man that we can understand one like Jesus, with all his spiritual power as a demonstration of which is fundamental in all of life. Dwell for a while on the idea of the universe as the allness that we call God, realizing that everything within it, from the vast galaxies to the subatomic, to the subatomic particles, is created in, the, in and of the universe. You may wonder about the vastness of the universe and peer through it through a telescope. However, you are not on the outside looking in. You are on the inside looking out. You are the universe at the point where you are. Attributed to St. Augustine is this profound thought. Go in a circle whose center is everywhere and whose circumference is nowhere. If the center is everywhere, it is where you are. You are the center of the universe, the center of God. This is not a point to be made egotistically, but transcendently. There is that of you which is centered in God and which is a point of God activity flowing forth into expression as you. And the circumference is limitless. There is no limit to God or to man in God consciousness. Man is an, in, man is an individualization of God. We have a long way to go, but Jesus demonstrated a goal that is believable and achievable, and he pointed to that in us which is perfectible. Wherever we are along the way, no matter the problems or challenges, there is always more in us. The Christ in us as our hope of glory. Can we please repeat that? The Christ in us as our hope of glory, which means our potential for healing, overcoming, prospering and succeeded there and there is no limit here yeah, in the reading of the fast and feasting Hallelujah, 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 praise be the Lord Hallelujah, 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 praise be the Lord Praise be the Lord, hallelujah, praise be the Lord, hallelujah, praise be the Lord, hallelujah, praise Thank you very much, Naisha. And today's scripture is taken, is taken from Psalms 46, verse 1 to 2, Philippians 4, verse 13, and Ephesians 6, verse 10. And this would be read by our beloved Daniel. Good morning. Psalm 46, 1-2 God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Philippians 4, 13 I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Ephesians 6, 10 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Thanks be to God. Alright, so 
But before our message, we'll have our meditation song today. And this would be, as we listen meditatively to the words of You Raise Me Up, um, just take a deep breath before the song begins. You know, relax, let go of anything that's maybe resting on your lap. Um, you know, and free your hands and just take a deep breath and relax and listen. Here to give us a little bit more encouragement to stand tall. Our beloved spiritual brother here at Unity Center for Holistic Living, Mr. Cedric Cole, with his message for you today. Find true strength. Cedric. Pleasant good morning to you, my Unity, Unity family. Pleasant good morning to you. Isn't it true that he raises us up, us up to more than we can be? Oh, yes. okay. Namaste. The Christ in me beholds the Christ in you as we worship together for the glory of God. The Christ, the Christ, the Christ in me, in me as we worship together, together for the glory of God. Let's take it one more time. The Christ in me beholds the Christ in you as we worship together for the glory of God. And as Martin would say, I salute the energy that has brought us here together today. And I know that is not by accident, but by way of divine appointment. So thanks for being here. And for those of you who are not, I know that you are in the right place at the right time. Today, the title of my message is Find True Strength. And it speaks to the faculty of strength, which is our central theme for the month of March and which is represented by the disciple Andrew. Many people see strength as an attribute of physical progress. We pray that our children will grow handsome and strong because society associates those qualities with invincibility and success. But physical strength can be quite fleeting. It can be here now and gone in the next moment. It can be easily decimated by injury, or illness, or emotional weakness. The Bible tells the story of Samson, a mighty warrior, who single-handedly destroyed an entire army, being brought to his knees by Delilah, an enchanting woman. And so this begs the question of what is true strength, and where does it come from? The scripture is replete with verses which indicate that true strength is spiritual in nature and has its foundation in God. Like building physical strength through exercise, we must build physical, uh, spiritual strength through meditation and prayer, thus activating our spirit to connect with the divine from within, thereby giving us the power we need to live a happy and fulfilling life. We must understand that strength manifests itself in many attributes of God. It is therefore no wonder that strength undergirds many of the twelve faculties that we associate with the twelve disciples. And we heard in the reading earlier on that strength is wisdom. And at least these faculties are intertwined in a circular chain that has neither a beginning nor an end. So you will find that strength is often referred to as many different aspects of the 12 faculties that we acknowledge. It is some, it is, as I said earlier on, it is defined as wisdom. In some cases, you will see it being a link to faith and so on. We are in the season of length, and as Martin told us last week, we can adopt the acronym L-E-N-T to mean let's eliminate negative thinking. We must resist the pull of negativity that is so strong in our society and reflected in gossip and some aspects of radio, television, social media, printed media, music, and even carnival. Therefore, we must refrain from all negative thoughts, including those emotions associated with unforgiveness and a hardened heart. 
very important. But forgiveness is so difficult for some people that we may choose to ask the question, why? Why is it so difficult to forgive? Why can't we forgive someone who has kicked us when we were down? Why can't we forgive a spouse who has been unfaithful? Why is it difficult to have the same feelings for a friend who has deserted us when we needed him most? Why can't we forget the con man who has fleeced us of our little money that we so painstakingly accumulated over years of struggle? This, the answer to these questions may lie in the very word forgive. You see, to forgive, as our spiritual leaders have told us so many times from this podium, is to give something for something. It's a win-win situation. Yes, brothers and sisters, it is to give something for something. And very often we cannot appreciate what we get because it is not tangible. We cannot see it. We cannot smell it. We cannot hold it in our hands. And even for those of us who have transcended that level of simplicity and reached the level of consciousness to realize that the gift we receive for letting go is spiritual, we still let our humanness stand in the way. It is our ego that stands in the way of forgiveness. We must call on God to give us strength to let go. We must understand that the ego is an entity in itself with a humanistic persona. But we must also adhere to the teachings of scripture and let it die. We must let the one decrease so that the other can increase. As Emily Cady puts it in Lessons in Truth, always seek to cultivate or to bring into visibility individuality, not personality. In proportion as the one increases, the other must decrease. When we do this, we would realize that it is only through spiritual strength that we can eliminate those strong negative emotions that hold us in bondage to a hardened heart. And what about difficult times? What do we do when the road is long, with many a winding turn, and there are obstacles in the way? What does a mother do when there is no food in the house, and her children are hungry and crying? She prays and she has faith and Andrew comes to the rescue. How many of you know the feeling when expenses are about stripped income and there is no one to turn to? I'm sure that there are a few of you here who have had that experience. And how many of you have had a challenge of ill health and ponder your next move with great uncertainty? Well, I have been there. Eleven years ago, I was diagnosed with stage 3 colon cancer. I was afraid. I prayed and asked God for strength to guide me every step of the way. And today, I'm cancer free. Praise God. On March 5th, as part of my regular checkup, I did a colonoscopy and the results were very good. Praise God. I want to hear you say it, not for me, but for all of us. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, folks, there is much for which you must give thanks and praise. Brothers and sisters, ask God for strength to overcome the challenges of life, and he will deliver you. He said, I will never forsake you, and he never will. Psalm 46 1 tells us, God is our refuge and our strength a very present help in trouble. Remember that there is no spot where God is not. He's omnipresent. Seek him and have faith and he will show you the way. Evelyn LaShawn Palmer, also known as Germany Kent and also known as the Hope Guru for her writing, says, with God you are stronger than your struggles, fiercer than your fears. God provides comfort and strength to those who trust in him. Be encouraged, keep standing, and know that all is going to be all right. See, God's strength is every present in those who make sacrifices in their lives for the betterment of others. It is often difficult 
for parents to remain in unprogressive jobs or in places where there are few opportunities just so that their children could access something that would foster their growth and development. We sometimes hear of brothers and sisters giving up their dreams to become foster parents to their younger siblings for one reason or another. And there are those who volunteer of their time to a cause or a purpose. I have a boyhood friend, Wayne King, whose family emigrated to the US 50 years ago. His younger brother, Carl King, dedicated his life to getting his friend, Colin Warner, exonerated for a murder that he did not commit. He borrowed money for lawyers. He took a job as a court courier to learn about the court system so that he could keep abreast of developments in the case. And he did everything he could for his friend until he finally succeeded. This is a remarkable story which was aired internationally by BBC and made into a movie called Crown Heights. It shows the spiritual strength of two men, one refusing to admit to a crime he did not commit despite promises of freedom if he did so, and the other dedicating his life for his friend's freedom. The interesting thing is that both men took the position that they would rather die than change their conviction. Brothers and sisters, God gives us strength of character, but we must dig deep in times to reach it. And we cannot always put a limit to our expect a time limit to our expectations. We often must exhibit patience and courage in order to succeed. Carl didn't think it would take him 21 years to get Colin exonerated, but he had patience and courage. I built a beautiful tumbles complex not far from here. I expected that it would take five years, but it took eight. It was fraught with delays and difficulties. I was often on the verge of giving up, but I prayed and God gave me the patience and the courage to see it to the end. My plumber often jokes, saying to me, Mr. Cool, you're good. You're real good. You could take hands. Most men would have dead already. <laughs> the, the merchants here and our mates, in their experience, can also speak to the attributes of love and dedication, patience and courage to deal with some of life's challenges. In Peter 5, 7, we are told, Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. That verse speaks to patience. And 2 Timothy 1.7 admonishes us to have courage. For it says that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and self-discipline. Yes, brothers and sisters, apart from power and love, God has given us a spirit of self-discipline. And it is through that strength that we are able to set goals and to achieve them. We cannot live aimlessly. We must chart a course and follow it. Our journey may be much more difficult than we anticipate, but you can only succeed if you persevere. You may stumble and fall, but always get up. You may become weary and must stop, then tarry for a while, but continue. Don't let your dreams wither and die. Those who exhibit self-discipline are the ones who succeed. They demonstrate spiritual strength in their resilience. They dream the impossible dream and through their consciousness make it a reality. At one time it was thought that man could not run a four, sub four minute mile, but Roger Bannister did it. At one time it was felt that Mount Everest could not be conquered, so Edmund Hillary climbed it. It was said that the moon was unreachable. Well, Neil Armstrong proved it that wrong. And how about the belief that to run a marathon in under two hours is impossible? The Lord Kipchanji put that to rest this year. It was he who inscribed on his hand, the human spirit knows no limit. They've been trying to run the marathon for forever, below two minutes. 
And he said to the world, I can do it. And it's on his hand, he has inscribed, the human spirit knows no limit. And he did it. Through self-discipline, a man can achieve whatever he can perceive. Because Jesus tells us, it is not I, but he who is in me who doeth the work. That is the Christ that is in him that does the work. In Philippians 4.13, we are told that I can do anything through Christ who strengthens me. It is in the Christ in us who tells us to try again. It is the Christ in us who tells us that we can succeed. It's the Christ in us who tells us, be kind. It's the Christ in us who motivates us to dream. It's the Christ in us that propels us forward. We must acknowledge that our strength comes from within, comes from that Christ that embodies and lives within our very being. In fasting and feasting booklet for 2020 on March 10th, which is my birthday, I sort of look forward a bit. There's a poem entitled, God is, you are, in which the author, Martha Smock, declares, God is strength. You have the strength of body, mind, and emotion, strength of soul. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we know that true strength comes from God. God is strength and strength is God. Let me hear you say, God is strength, God is strength. and strength is God. God is strength and strength is God. God is strength and strength is God. And as we ponder this reality, we recognize that our true strength is spiritual. It comes from within and appears as attributes of forgiveness, patience, courage, and self-discipline, among other things. And it is activated through meditation and prayer. That's how you activate your strength, through meditation and prayer, through that tabernacle with your inner self, by listening to what God has to say. Now let us relax and close our eyes Relax and become still as we come before God in a moment of prayer. Dear Father, we recognize that at times in our humanness, we have struggled with thoughts of unforgiveness. At times, we have been overcome by the negative emotions that have accompanied such thoughts. But we thank you, Father, for your saving grace. We thank you that as soon as we recognize these obstacles, we are able to deny their existence and wipe them away and open our heart to the good that is God. We acknowledge, O oh Lord, that at times the journey of life has been difficult, but you have given us faith and strength, building our consciousness as we go, so that the journey gets easier and easier with every passing day. We thank you for courage to make the sacrifices that we must make and the self-discipline to pursue the dreams we hold dear. And we know without a doubt that we cannot fail, for you, you are with us always. We thank you now and forever. Amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. Thank you, Cedric. Thank you very much. And I'd like to ask Martin now to come and bless you for that wonderful message. Oh, good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Good morning. I greet you in love as we worship together for the glory of God. We greet you in love as we worship together for the glory of God. And it would have been remiss of me as your spiritual leader not to stand and tell you how impressed and how blessed I feel by the delivery of our spiritual brother. Cedric. Let's hear a round of applause for Cedric. And it shows how we are growing and expanding as an organization. We may not be large in terms of physical numbers, but this presentation is delivery. The quality of the delivery tells us that we are growing in spirit and in stature, in the wisdom and after the stature of the Christ. You know, it can never be always about Martin or Jill giving the message from up here. Because if it's just about Martin and Jill, then we are not growing. Do you agree? Yeah. If it is always just about Martin and Jill, then we are not growing. So it shows what has happened here this morning, 
that we are growing and we are expanding in consciousness and I'm so pleased to see that. I trust that uh, this will be an encouragement for others to do likewise. Don't wait for us to call upon you to come up and deliver. <laughs> Volunteer, you know. Perhaps we should have long lines of people who wanted to... In fact, I think we had started at one point putting having a list go, go wrong, but we never got it well, uh, much further with that, you know. So let's have more of you coming to the fore. Um, I have always said to you, I did not begin speaking from the Unity platform when I became a licensed Unity teacher. By the time I became a licensed Unity teacher, I would have been doing that for about 10 to 12 years. You see? So that you don't have to wait until then. You can start now. And, and, and you know, and it's not the first time, of course, that Cedric has delivered for us. And um, keeping true to form has been very, 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 very effective here this morning. And it, what it is saying to me is that on, on several other occasions, I can sit down and call on Cedric you know, to, to deliver for us. So let us say, Mr. Cedric, Cedric, we love you. Cedric, we love you. We bless you. We bless you. And we thank God for your growing. And we thank God for your growing. And we see you always as God sees you. And we see you always as God sees you. Perfect, whole, and free. Perfect, whole, and free. As you were created to be. As you were created to be. Forever growing. Forever growing. <laughs> and evolving. And evolving. In the wisdom and after the stature of the Christ. In the wisdom and after the stature of Christ. And thank you. And I just want to address you all for Well, let me just take this opportunity to also say Happy International Women's Day to all the women and by extension all the women in our society. You know, you all have at least two occasions during the year to be celebrated on International Women's Day and also on Mother's Day. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. We should perhaps declare also International <laughs> Men's Day. <laughs> but you know, women play such a very pivotal and significant role in society as being at the very core of society and nation building. And in many instances, you are the first teachers even of the children, even before the children get to school. So you, you, you play a very remarkable job. I heard on the television last night some, uh, one of the women from the women's organization asking women today to strike. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know if you all heard that call. Yes, asking women to strike today and let the men do all the cooking and all the work today. I, I am so glad that my wife wasn't watching the television at that time. <laughs> now, on a more somber note, I need to address you this morning on an issue that is of national and international concern. And I think that I would be failing in my duty as spiritual leader not to uh, remind you of the issue that I'm sure you're already aware of and to share what I think should be our response to the scenario. You're well aware of the threat of, uh, of the coronavirus, Corona-19, as it is otherwise called. And you may also appreciate the fact that other church churches have already taken the lead role in terms of how they respond to such a virus. I know, for example, in the Catholic diaspora, in the Anglican diaspora, and I even heard last night uh, um, in, in terms of the Presbyterian uh, grouping, and I think the Seven Days Adventists, they've already taken certain initiatives. I know, for example, that uh, restrictions have not been imposed in terms of the way in which communion is, is, been, is being um, given to congregants and the wine and even the shaking of hands for the peace, for the peace demonstration and so on. And, uh, I have to say that I endorse the positions taken by these bodies. It is all well and good for us to say that we are a faith-based organization and that we are using our affirmations and deniers. And all that is good, I'm going to continue doing this. But God has never said that we must be fools in paradise. And God has given us the wisdom, the intelligence to make wise and judicious decisions when the need arises so soon. And I dare say that I think that the need arises now. Um, in light of that, I want to say, and, and with the greatest respect for other people's views, and I'm doing this out of an abundance of caution, as the spiritual leader of this organization, as small as we are in number, I think that we still have to um, comply with health practices as advised uh, by the national and international authorities. So that we, where I stand as spiritual leader of this organization, whenever I stand in the pulpit, until such 
concerns are allayed by the national authorities. I would not be asking or encouraging you to embrace one another, to shake hands or to kiss and so on. I would not be taking that position because as I said, I think that we have to be guided by wisdom and intelligence. However, if as individuals you feel so moved to do that, then it is up to you. But the call would not come from me, from the pulpit, to embrace or to hug or to hold hands and so on. Um, I, I know that there may be you know, different views on this, but we have at least one health practitioner, I think, a young health practitioner, who can either endorse my concerns or probably can say no, that they know that they're overreacting. But I think that out of an abundance of caution, that is the position I would like to take as spiritual leader whenever I am, whenever I am on the pulpit. Um, uh, something else I wanted to say that seems to be escaping my memory. <laughs> Again, it's relevant to this to this scenario. But are there any are there any views on this? Perhaps I can ask our young practitioner what what. what